dumb, cool, weird podcast. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Dumb Cool Weird Podcast. And today we're talking about Dr. Dr. Goldfoot and the Bikini Machine. You know, Vincent Price didn't just do horror movies. Yes, and by the way, Vincent Price was the only actor I recognized in this entire movie. Yeah, none of these other people, like, or the pop culture references throughout the whole movie made any sense. Yeah, to and us. it's really, it's really because like we're separated by this movie for by like almost thirty years. I mean, it's no way, way over thirty. I think we're in the forties. Well, no, no, no. Um, nineteen sixty six, nineteen sixty seven, nineteen. Um, let's see, nineteen. Yeah, 1966 to 1977 is, or 76 is is a, a decade, then another decade, and then another decade would be 1996. So be, that would be 30 years. Okay. But, I mean, we're also kind of separated, I mean, like culturally by at least 40 or 50 with 2023. Yes. So, theoretically, yes. We weren't able to understand things at the age of, you know, one or two years old when we were born. Yeah. So, yeah, I guess we're separated by, like, 50 years, really. Because, I mean, there, there's that guy on the motorcycle in the dungeon just like, why is it me? Why is it always me? And I'm like, was that supposed to be something? Is that supposed to be something? Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, like, what, what the fuck was that? So, basically, this movie is ridiculous. It's obviously a parody of everything James but, Bond related. But the funnier part about this is the fact that this is all, like, parody of James Bond makes Austin Powers a lot more funny because they put – they. They took a lot of the stu- this stuff and put it in Austin Powers. Yeah, the fembots for sure. Yeah, definitely the fembots. Mm-hmm. I like how he gets like the the deep voiced, really fucked up fembot, and then uh, mm-hmm. it kicks mm-hmm. Igor's ass. Yeah, it whips his fucking ass. <laughs> so basically, here's the premise of the movie. It starts off with this this uh, guy um, in the beginning. I think his name is Fred. Uh, his name is like Tim. Tim. Oh, why do you call him Fred? I can't remember anymore. Oh no, Tim! What Tim was the Tom Armstrong was the guy that they were supposed to yeah get, and then the fembot goes and is like walking around the street looking for him, and she stops an armed robbery and gets shot full of holes. Yep, and then gets hit by a car. Yep, gets hit by a car, and then ends up in the cafeteria. And she drinks milk. You know, they do a little gag where the milk comes out of the holes. You know, it's fun time. Yeah, and then and that's where she meets Fred, and then they go and have sexy time back at his apartment. Yep. And then she starts like speaking in different accents. By the way, her her first accent is a su- is a really bad Southern accent. It's like oh the worst God. I've ever heard in my life. Um, and you know we're from me and Nick are from the South down here, so it's very obvious. It's, it's very bad. painful. Um, but basically, what ends up happening is you know Doctor Goldfoot, you know looking on his uh 4K monitor. By the way, <laughs> yeah, back in the '60s, he's like he is like Igor, you fucking idiot. That's yeah. not the guy. Not the guy. I love how Igor's like is like man. I wish I was dead again, because apparently this is how all of these fembots are created. He just digs up dead people and turns them into cyborgs. Yep, puts them through his bikini machine. No shit, Be- yeah. actual bikini machine. Yeah, puts them through this bikini. So I didn't know what the bikini machine was in the beginning, and now I know what it is. It, it was that it was. A, it's basically a machine. Where, so the weird premise of this is because once we get past the part where the fembot gets back on course and tries to go get you know Armstrong, yeah, we find out that what he like what uh, Doctor Goldfoot does. By the way, Doctor Goldfoot's shoes are fucking whack as shit. I think he could have done better. He shoes had than that. three <laughs> giant eccentric feather pens. Yeah. So you, so you expect him to have shoes like that, he, dude? He was eccentric. He was living his best life. He dude. was like, I could use my science. For anything else, but I've decided it's a life of crime for me. Yeah, because basically what ends up happening, though, is he it's, – it's kind of weird. So they're robots, but they're not robots at the same time. He basically – he runs a mortuary upstairs, and so basically he takes dead bodies, and then he turns them into robots. Yes. It's such a weird concept. One of the guys was like one of his employed undertakers that died, and then he resurrected him to be his assistant. Yeah, his grave very, digger. Very, very incompetent, too. It's like, it's like oh, I shouldn't have brought you back. Yes. And he's always slapping his hand and, like, scolding him. And when he scolds him, he the, the guy, the other guy just kind of looks down. Like, like when Vincent Price is scolding him, he's just kind of like, oh, 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 yes, master. And then his name's not <laughs> even Igor. I think he had a real name, and he's, he's just like, you're Igor now. 
Yeah. <laughs> no, no. What's funny though is they have a they have a electric chair to punish the fembots when they do yeah. something wrong. And when they do something wrong. Oh, and then they have a dirt master. They're uh, they're they're evil pit master dungeon yeah. guy who yeah. never, tortures the women. We never got his name. We just call him. We just call him Dirt Master. Because like, we, we were from like in front, like from Bar- the Barbarians that we watched last week, fucking Dirt Master. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah it, it's 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 bad. Like it, it's 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 good cheese though. Like it's it's pretty funny. Like I mean, me and Nick kind of fell asleep towards the end of the movie, but because it was like literally just a massive well, car it, chase, it just kept going. You know, so basically, what ends up happening though is the fembot that originally was supposed to get with Fred ends up getting with you know Armstrong, and then like. And then he, he sees that they get married in a magazine. He gets really upset, and then he starts driving around town. Because he thinks she's an actual woman. And then all of a sudden, you know, he tears off her hand when him and Vincent Price are fighting over her. Yep. Yep, and then they get the severed hand, and he tries to show people the severed hand. Oh, look, she's a fembot. She's a fembot. And um, essentially what ends up happening is he somehow ends up at Armstrong's, like, apartment. Oh, and, yeah. And then they start – they. Both just start drinking. Just start drinking excessively. And then Armstrong's like, well, you hide in my secret bar. Because, you know, everybody back in the 60s and 70s had a fucking secret bar. They could just press a button. It would turn around. Yeah. <laughs> Quagmire, motherfuckers. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> like, uh, And it had the creepy like eye hole things for the pictures. Yeah, they always had those two. And basically, he was a, you know, and, and that's the thing about Armstrong and Fred. They're fucking idiots, dude. Like, they're always doing stupid shit. Like yeah. I can under I can understand that Fred's kind of a dumb like poor motherfucker, but how does Armstrong have all the wealth he has, being so stupid he is? I know, right? Yeah, but he he signs it off because he doesn't understand this bitch is a fucking gold digger, like digging the fucking gold out. But of him. she also drug drugs him most of the movie. Oh so yeah, giving him that's why moves like he keeps like that's why she he just keeps signing shit over. Oh yeah, yep, just signing shit over and all this other crazy stuff. And basically, he keep, I guess he keeps hoping he's going to get some, and then it just never happens. And so he he ends up, like, just signing over everything. And then, you know, and she keeps fucking up, so they, they keep punishing her. You know, they got the dirt master to punish her when she yeah, fucked she, up. Yeah, he hits her with a cattle prong. Yeah, yeah. And she scrubs the floor of the lair. Yep, and that's how he punishes her. Um, uh, I love how when they're going and having dinner and, and Vincent, Vincent Price's house is like, He's like, oh, I just got a bunch of evil plans here. Let me explain them to you. Oh, yeah. They, but they, over dinner. Yeah, they come to the house. And, um, you know, by the way, the, fir- the first time that uh, Fred goes to the house, he goes to the window and he sees them go down in the coffin because it's, it's a secret passageway. There's like some crazy old janitor guy. And we never see him again, by the way. Yeah, he just he was there. He was like he, he was just taking a nap on the cadaver, you know, on the slab and. <laughs> to be fair, I bet you that was like some guy working on the set who was like, "Fuck, I'm gonna just go take a nap real quick." Yeah, and I guess it was so funny they were just like, "We should just keep it in the movie." <laughs> yeah, he's fired though. Yeah, he's fired, but we're gonna keep it in the movie anyway. But basically, what ends up happening though is, um, you know, uh, a gold, gold, uh, Goldfoot basically sends all these other chicks out of there. And by the way, he was trying to be racially diverse because he did have an Asian chick and a black chick. He there. had only like two though. Like, yeah, yeah, too. But he didn't have one Latina. Nope. Just not one thick Hina. Nope. As just, they call them. Just a bunch of white chicks and a black chick and an Asian chick. Yeah. And basically what ends up happening though is is uh the the two idiots come you know, come to his house, which by the way, apparently has a serious wolf problem going yeah, on. Yeah, he outside. has like a series of wolves and owls and cats. Yeah, just like going on outside this suburban area, by the way. Um, yeah. and so they go inside and they're like, "Ooh, we have visitors." Uh, press the button, Igor, and then they like <laughs> fall down into this fucking secret lair. And like Nick was saying, they fucking showing them around. I was like, "Oh, here's these machines that can teach humanity how to be super intelligent, and I can make billions of dollars off this." But nah, we're not gonna. We're not. We're gonna, not gonna do. We're, that. we're gonna do that because I'm. I'm a, I like crime. Yep, and then we get to see his eccentric three quilled pins that he uses each one probably for something totally different. Yeah, no, it's like, <laughs> like, uh, and the fact is, like, all of his like knives, everything is like knife oriented to kill you. Yep, and he, but it never like does, it never actually like works. Oh, by the way, this guy basically is a mat like a g- fucking genius because he created like the first laser weapons. Yeah, like, like hand, not even just 
not even like a big bulky laser weapon, like a handheld laser yeah, it weapon. It was in a, li- a little lipstick too. He's like kablam. <laughs> Yeah, it's like, oh, you know, you could make money off that too, but no, we're not, we're not gonna do that either. Fence contracting, yeah. don't yeah, care, don't care. And so, basically, like, he goes downstairs, he tries to have dinner with them, and he straps them down to those fucking chairs, and they're like, oh, oh no, we can't move. And then he's like, he's like, have some of the fruit, and it's like, no, that's poison. And he's like, well, why would I poison you? What kind of person do you think I am? Yeah, but he, but he was supposed to knife them. Yeah, Remember, yeah. Igor, you forgot the knives. He forgot the knives. And then the knives fall off the <laughs> ceiling somehow and yep. don't even do anything. Yep. And then they had they were they were drinking they were drinking uh, well Gold Goldfoot was drinking wine, but they also had wine. And basically, he was like, mm, "This wine, it's been aged to a really good, you know, f- body and flavor." And he's like, "You should try some." And then they tr- they go to drink it, and they both look at each other, and they pour it out, and it's like liquid, like like glycerin, like not, yeah, that just fucking explodes on the ground. Oh, but the funniest thing was like when one of the fembots is running through, and Mister uh, and the Dirt Master is chasing her. He's like, "Oh, that's what happens when you giggle during dinner." <laughs> never, never explained. No, like I, I feel like Dirt Ma- the guy that they got to play the dungeon master, Dirt Master, whatever. He he was just like one of Vincent Price's like dirty sex friends back in the day. Pretty much, yeah. Like back in the like, just you have to think, right? Like when they were when they were making this movie. They were really capitalizing on James Bond and, like, porn. Yep. And they were probably like, hey, we got to get a big-name actor, so let's get this horror icon, Vincent Price, to do it. Vincent Price, you're going to kind of be you in a horror movie, but in a funny sense. Well, we were joking earlier. We were like, Vincent Price is like, they're like, so, Vincent, we got an idea for a movie. He goes, oh, oh, I'm in. I'm in. And they're like, they're like, what do you mean you're in? And it's like, I, I don't care. I'm in. And then I, I want it. Yeah, and then as he's leaving, he's like, there's a paycheck, right? And they're like, yeah. And he's like, all right, I'll be I mean, there. I'll, I'll, I'll be there Monday. I'll, I'll be there Monday. Um, so basically what ends up happening though is, is like after that, they lead these guys down into this <laughs> fucking ancient cathedral like place, by the way, underneath San Francisco. But, but what was funnier is that while they're torturing them, they have to put on their capes and like, you know, evil doer uniforms. Yeah. Uh, and like you said, like all the way at the bottom of San Francisco, but it makes sense though now because Hollywood's full of pedophiles. Yep. So that's, I think that, I think it was an Illuminati, um, like like haven probably oh, but, that, I mean, but that but that but that what that was the but when they went down there that was the moment where we saw this guy chained to a motorcycle <laughs> inside of a tomb and he was like i don't know why they make me do this why do i always have to do this and we're like what is this uh, about what is this who, from who is this do we know this guy is this a pop culture reference i don't get it yeah uh, we didn't we didn't get it at all and so they end up going downstairs and you know Armstrong is tied to one of those old classic swinging axe blade like yeah he's like, like you don't know what to talk yeah and so he gags him and he starts and he's like Igor bring Fred down here and he's like trying to get and, and Fred tricks Igor and then they and like the, handcuffs and, him in the uh, revolving yeah. cell yeah and then we think then we then we think Gold Goldfoot's dead because he falls down a fucking shaft and then oh, he, yeah. we, we think he's dead and he frees him. And then all of a sudden, he, like Gold Goldfoot gets right back up, and he's impervious to death. Yeah. And so, basically, what happens though is they escape, and you get like a 10, 20 minute car chase in oh, San yeah. Francisco. That's where we fell asleep. By the way, they, it didn't really change anything. It just it was them like switching vehicles because apparently fucking Gold foot rigged the city up to explode whenever he just deemed it necessary yeah just whatever he wanted to explode he could just get out his little magic remote and like hit the button and make it explode Boom. And, and they didn't die they, they they lived somehow and it's not a good time yeah it's not a good time and chasing and then you know they, they had that those old school like matted backgrounds where they would key in like all kinds <laughs> oh of my God. like like just goofy ass shit that looks completely fake by today's standards but back in the day it probably wowed people people were like oh my god <clears throat> oh my god it looks so real um and this is the part where it becomes like almost like a fucking commercial for visiting san francisco it's kind of like i don't want to say it's like king kung fu but king kung fu is stained in our mind as like one of the worst films yeah because like they were you know king kung fu was all about you know wichita kansas you know this this movie's about you know, you know, I like, think <laughs> about I have a theory, uh, San Francisco, then. California. So now I have a theory that what if all of these movies just kind of like every now and again would be like, 
would also be working as like ads for the city that they're filming in like like uh oh you should go to brooklyn new york well i mean it would make sense because like <clears throat> you know they got to get money somehow to make these fucking movies whether it's some fucking rich miser that lives somewhere or it's some kind of like joe schmo that owns a fucking like factory somewhere that yeah. wants to put his you know his product in there product placement or you know some porn star that wants to get his crotch in there somehow you know well you know i mean i'm pretty certain that vincent price had sex with everybody that he he hired as the uh bikini ladies yeah because here's the thing we 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 had a suspicion that in the movie goldfoot was having sex with all those fembots like over and over again by the way that would make him a necrophiliac yeah. and a necromancer yep and that would also make him uh, a botophile. Yeah. So kind of two at the same time. And so, yeah. Botophile? Botophile. I don't know. <laughs> You're just making shit up I'm now. just making shit up. Yeah. I mean, I mean, hey, this generation does make shit up all the time, you know. Yep. And then we get this. And then basically what ends up happening is they, they chase from different car to car, trolley to motorcycle. Bicycle. Motorcycle with the side on it. You know, all these different things. And then they end up at the where the ocean is, and they trick Goldfoot into driving off into the ocean, and then we think that they're okay. We get an advertisement for the International San Airline. Francisco, <laughs> International San Francisco, you know, airliner and like like airport. And then we're on the airplane, and all of a sudden they see the they see what's her so, face? Yeah, see Diane, and then mm -hmm. then she's like hanging out. She's Austrian now, and, and now she's, she's hanging Fred's, out with his, like, Fred's uncle. Yeah, Uncle Donald. Yeah, Uncle Donald. Like, he's like, you know, I just had to take her. You know, I just had, I just had to have her. And it's it like, it's like, Uncle Donald, that's a, that's a robot. He's like, no. Nah. Yeah, and then all of a sudden we just hear Vincent Price laughing. Oh yeah, Igor and Vincent Price are flying the plane. Yeah, that that that. Like that, that was their last laugh. Like, haha, your mm. uncle fucked a dead body. Yep. And then we're just kind of like. Okay, and then it ends, and it says the end question mark. And by the way, there is a sequel to this movie. So we're we're gonna we're gonna, to we're gonna have to watch it to see what happened because you know the suspense is killing us. Yeah, yeah. Um, but yes, that that's essentially. I know I know that was a quick review, but goddamn, that, that was, was pretty that much was, it. That's pretty much the whole fucking movie. It's just it's basically American James Bond. Yeah, a I very mean, poorly made. Yeah, I mean it's it's very 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 like it's very much a parody of James Bond. I mean I'm guessing that and then gold I guess gold Goldfoot is supposed to be uh, Goldfinger. Goldfinger. And, yeah. I mean, this is this is why Austin Powers worked so well is because it had so much material to also kind of work with. You know, it had a good yeah. idea because I mean I don't remember in James Bond ever ha like with them ever having like fembots or anything. No. There might have been one or two movies that had fembots. I don't really remember because, like, I've never seen – I've actually never seen a James Bond really? movie. Really? Okay, so you, we got to go and do that because James Bond movies are fun. Yeah. I mean, they're also just as wacky and deranged, too, because yeah. you watch them and you're like, wow. Um... I w I, I'm going to be honest with you, man. After watching this movie, I think the thing that I'm most disappointed in is that there wasn't more gold-related gold puns related to uh, Goldfoot. Maybe that's what made that, – well, you see, Goldfinger, I don't remember there being very many gold-related puns. Yeah. Like, you know, he would just, like, smother people in gold after he killed them, so that was, like, his, his like, little thing. Yeah. But he didn't really go into it like gold, thing, like gold member. Yeah. I mean, gold member obviously was a parody of yeah. Goldfinger, and, but that's the thing. But then he also wore the shoes of Goldfoot. Yeah, I guess that's true. I guess that's where that those, those sh now I understand from gold and the member, bitches. Yeah, yeah, and I understand where all that stuff comes from now. It's obviously making fun of gold, uh, you know, Goldfoot and Goldfinger. Yep, it's like a combination of the two. Um, but yeah, but I and I'm guessing Double O Quarter was supposed to be. <laughs> he's barely even a spy. Yeah, he's barely even a spy. I think he was supposed to be a parody of James Bond, but it oh, yeah. just didn't really it didn't really land very well, in my opinion. No, but it landed a lot better than the Barbarian Brothers. Yeah, I would say this movie was more watchable than that movie. I mean, I'll it, give it a five. Yeah, out of ten. But this movie, yeah, yeah, that's that's good. I mean, if you're looking for a fun, classic, cheesy, like fun 1960s movie, I would say give it a watch. If you yeah. if you're, into I mean, that. it's not gonna kill you. It's not the Barbarian Brothers. Yeah, it, it's, it's not King Kung Fu. Yeah, it's not King Kung Fu. I mean, this, you know, you, you got this one. I think that's the most unwatchable film we've watched. Yeah. Is King Kung Fu. 
Mm-hmm. But we definitely got to watch more Vincent Price movies too. Yeah, I mean, I'm I'm curious because we we do have a lot on the list. Yeah, literally, folks, we have enough material for probably ten thousand episodes. I'm, and I wish that me and Nick were making that up. There's a lot of bad '60s movies. Yeah, I mean, not just '60s movies, just bad movies in general. I mean, yeah. we have enough. There's I, probably enough to watch like ten thousand. I mean, for the 10, World episodes. War Two, like the ninth, the Great Depression, and World War Two. Cool. Really, just didn't have a lot of people's like staying behind because you know war and uh, you you're, you're the Holly was just like we still got to make movies though yeah you know um, I will say you know I don't know when we're gonna do the sequel to this we'll, we'll probably do that in a couple of, like in a month or so because we're we're kind of jumping around and doing other stuff but you know it'll be a good surprise but um, the next movie we're probably gonna do is we've been talking about doing this movie for probably about a year. year. So it's called Things to Come. It's a H.G. Wells movie, <laughs> and it's you know it's not supposed to be funny, but goddamn, it's really it's, funny. It's fucking hilarious. So progress, progress, and so we're doing that. We're probably gonna do that one next time. And uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this review. Um, you know, check this out if you love really campy, you know, James Bond, you know, parody. You know, before Austin Powers. Yeah. And this was the parody before Austin Bowers. So definitely check it out. Uh, check out our podcast. You know we got new shit coming all the time. You know we haven't. You know we haven't. We 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 try to post every Monday. Sometimes we we miss it because we're both pretty busy guys because we have lives. But yeah. Um, and he's got a wife. So lives um, and wives. Lives and wives. And um, yeah, just uh, give us a like, subscribe. You know all the good stuff you hit that bell notification you'll you get notified at all times and you know we we're, we're also on you know 50 different like platforms for audio podcasts you not know? even joking yeah not even joking a lot of them there's a lot of them so as usual you know fucking check out this funky fucking crazy ass fucking thing and from the 60s and i know you'll love it you know and it'll make you want to visit san francisco but i wouldn't anymore because it's a fucking it's filled with homeless people and heroin addicts shit on the fucking streets there's a poop app and take us away nick stay sexy georgia thanks for checking out the dumb cool weird podcast we're a movie podcast now so movie monday is every monday about crappy movies from the 20th century it's gonna be great folks i can't wait to show y'all